Hey guys, Jen here. Today I'm going to be going over some real estate vocab terms we need to know for the real estate license exam. And I have 12 terms for you with 12 acronyms, so you will not forget them. If you're like me, I can't just remember hundreds of words. I need tricks and phrases and acronyms to help remember. So I hope these help you guys. If they do, hit the like button and subscribe. This is my first video, but I'm happy to make more. And hopefully this helps with your journey to becoming a real estate agent. I am studying as well. These And these 12 acronyms have been a lifesaver for me on the practice exams. So I know they're gonna help when I'm taking that test and I have a little bit of test anxiety. I'll see a word, remember the acronym, and at the very least be able to cross off a couple options, you know, two out of the four options at least make an educated guess. So let's get started. Our first word here is government power. The way I remember government power is PEAT, police power, eminent domain, taxation, and S cheat. So remember the difference between eminent domain and S cheat. Eminent domain is when the government takes private property for public use, but they have to pay you. If they don't pay you, you can file for inverse condemnation. S cheat is when someone dies in test state without a will and their property goes to the government. So I remember this by as cheat, the government is cheating. They're getting free property. So remember, government power, cheat, as cheat, government is cheating. What determines what is a fixture and what is not? This is one of my favorites that I got from Prep Agent, another great resource online. Joe has some really good ones, such as Maria. It's method of attachment, adaptability, relationship, intention and agreement. So, so the question you wanna ask when determining if something is a fixture or not, was it made to be permanent or will it damage the property if it is removed? If the answer is yes to these questions, it is a fixture. Remember a trade fixture involves businesses and if they can remove it without damaging the property, like a billboard, it is a trade fixture and goes with the tenant. So that billboard would go with the tenant who is leasing the building. So what's a fixture? Maria, what's the method of attachment, adaptability, relationship of the parties, intention of the parties and agreement of the parties. Your bundle of rights, this is what you get to enjoy when you own something. It is your deep C, bundle of rights, deep C, disposition, enjoyment, exclusion, possession, control. So when you own something, you get to enjoy all of this, yay. Your adjusted basis, we all love the math and finance part, don't we? So some acronyms will help us through it. Your adjusted basis, remember PICS, PICS of the adjusted basis. It's the price of the home plus improvements plus closing costs, then subtract allowable depreciation. So basically the adjusted basis is the updated or adjusted value of the home. The reason I made it PICS and not like PICA, which should have be allowable depreciation at the end of the word is so I don't forget what to subtract, which is the allowable depreciation from the cost of the home improvements and closing costs. So again, PICS is your adjusted basis. The four essential elements of value, this comes up all the time, and stud, scarcity, transferability, utility, demand, scarcity. How much is there of it? Transferability, can it be sold? Utility, can it be used? Demand, does anybody want it? You know, when you're online shopping and it says only two left in stock, buy now. There's probably like 50 left in stock. But when something is in high demand, more people want it. So stud is your essential elements of value. Next is the essential elements to a valid contract. This one is not actually a word, but I couldn't, I couldn't remember the four essential elements. I just couldn't remember them. So I had to come up with something, MCCL. That's super easy for me to remember. Mutual consent, capable parties, consideration, lawful objects. If the contract is missing one of these four elements, the contract is void. A contract is one of three things, valid, void, or voidable. So just remember, it needs these four things, MCCL to be a valid contract. All right, another math and finance here, your net operating income formula. 
For the NOI, remember the word SOAR. You subtract your operating expenses and replacement reserves from the effective gross income. The NOI is for investors. It analyzes the potential income from real estate investments. Remember that the effective gross income is adjusted for property vacancies while gross income does not. But of course, if you're investing in a property, you want to know how many vacancies there would be because there's no point in investing in a property that's going to be mostly vacant. You're not going to make any money. You're going to lose money. So I've seen a lot of effective gross income questions in the math questions. So just remember SOAR. Your NOI is SOAR. You subtract your expenses and replacement reserves from the effective gross income. All right, what do you generally need to qualify for a conventional loan? This one makes me laugh. You need gas, good credit, afford the down payment, and a steady income. The reason I needed a word for this is because with the FHA and the conventional loans and all these different types of loans, I needed something to wrap my brain around, at least if I see the word conventional loan, I'll know if you have good credit, afford, you can afford the down payment, and you have a steady income, then you're, good, you're pretty good to go for the conventional loan. Remember that a conventional loan is not backed up by the government. They conform to the rules of Freddie, of Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. You can also get a conventional loan through a private lender. This is why you want good credit and steady income for this type of loan. Less risk for the lender if you have gas. You typically have to put 20% down on a conventional loan. If it's less than that, you'll have to get PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. When you see a fixed rate or adjustable rate mortgage, the ARM, these are conventional loans. The other option is an FHA, which you can qualify for with an average to low credit score. The upside of an FHA is you can put a really low down payment, like 3.5%. The downside of this is you have to get a more you have to get mortgage insurance so it adds to your monthly debt. Prescriptive easement, lots of easements. I've seen so many easements. This, for some reason, I can never remember what the prescriptive easement was. So just remember, HOC, sort of a word, H-O-C-C, -C, hostile, open, continuous crossing for blank amount of years, depending on what state you're in. So in a prescriptive easement, the dominant estate, the one doing the crossing, is granted access to the property of the servient estate, the one being served. Hypothecation, I think I said that right, but it doesn't matter because I remember hypothecation. Pot, an asset is used as collateral for a loan without giving up, possession, ownership rights, title. So when you hypothecate something, you're taking a mortgage, but you're, you still have your pot, your possession, your ownership rights, and your title. So a debtor would enter into a mortgage agreement using their house as collateral until the mortgage is paid off. The main purpose of this is to mitigate the creditor's credit risk. If the, if the debtor does not pay, the creditor possesses the collateral, which in this case was the house. So just remember that. If you see the word hypothecation, pot. You still get your possession, your ownership rights, and your title while you're paying off the mortgage. A 1031 exchange. This is a tax question. 1031 Add the dots to that top of the ones, and you'll remember like kind properties. Just I got this one wrong on a recent practice exam, and it was the only one that had the phrase like kind in it. So I was mad at myself. Just 1031 equals like kind properties. 1031 exchange, like kind properties. If you remember that, remember the dots. Just remember the dots, and we'll all get this one right. And then last but not least, this is another one that I love from Prep Agent because it's like a song. I can sing it in the shower, sing it in the car, and there's so many OR and ERs. It can be so confusing. So I'm just going to write this out on my scratch piece of paper on the test. Grantor, lendor, optionor, vendor, makes me the giver of the propator for your pleasure. Grantee, lendy, optionee, vendy, gives me property, makes me happy. So yes, it can be silly, but I'm going to write this down and it's just going to make those questions so much easier. OR is the person who performs the action and EE is the recipient of that action. A vendor sells to a vendee. A vendor conveys property to a vendee. All right, that is all 12 of those vocab terms. There's so much for us to remember. 
And from everyone I've talked to, this real estate license exam is basically a glorified vocab exam. So now you have a chunk of vocab terms that are easy to remember. I hope they help you. And again, please send me some acronyms if you have any. I'd love to see them. They'd help me study as well. And thank you guys for watching.